Hey guys, Amartya here from FTJ and who are you? Hey guys, I'm Anantan here from FTJ and you know what is better than one host? Two hosts. So we are here with a new episode of Talktology 6. So let's get started. So the big news for this week is that Google is now allowing us to customize our own virtual visiting cards. So how can you guys do this? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, take up any mobile, go to Chrome, search your own name, and then this card will pop up. And tapping on it, you can customize your own visiting card. You can set up your work, your hobbies, your employment, education details, pretty much everything really. So Anantan, have you tried this feature out yet? Actually, I haven't tried it, but I have go gone through it. I'll do it after this video. So the next news comes from Aiku. So Amartya, what did you think about the Aiku thing? Well, my major problem with the IQ3 was the refresh rate. At 60 Hz, it just doesn't cut it for a gaming phone. So IQ is coming up with a new phone. Can you guess what it is called? IQ4 maybe? No, it's IQ5 actually. So the IQ5 leaked images have started popping up on Chinese social network site Weibo. And we also have a Geekbench score. So the Geekbench score is single core 926 and multi core 3377. So Amartya, what do you think, of, think about it? Well, uh, I expected kind of like a spec bomb from the IQ3. It's uh, still the same 865. I would have thought at least an 865 plus would have been nice, right? Yeah. But the biggest uh, thing that the leaks point towards is that we now have an upgraded screen. Nice. So 120 hertz, that's a big update from 60 hertz. Yeah. You know, major jump up. Gamers would love that. And we also have a curved screen with a punch hole to the top left. So kind of like OnePlus 8 Pro. Yeah kind of like that but hey i don't know if the resolution is going to be qhd or full hd but yeah. we'll see to that as for the rest of the leaks what we know so far is 120 watt fast charging along with that we are also supposed to be getting a triple camera setup with a periscope camera you know for zooming in and stuff and then there's gonna be two sorts of backs that have been leaked so there's already the bmw edition we have seen that before and now there's another kevlar edition that's kind of similar in look and feel and other than that well we'll know, get to know more about it when iku eventually releases the device and that's going to be this monday august the 17th Ooh. moving on to the third major news of this week we have redmi's own gaming laptop being launched and actually the specs are kind of surprising i mean they're really good for the money right yeah. So, well, what we are getting here is a 144 hertz screen, 1080p, of course, with 100% sRGB coverage. So that should be great for content creators as well as gamers. As for CPUs, we are getting 10th generation i5 and i7 CPUs. So we are getting the 10.5200H and 10.750H. Uh, both of them uh, high core count CPUs should be great for again gaming as well as productivity and as far as the gpus goes we uh, we don't have any amd G gpu or cpu in here it's all a intel plus nvidia we're getting the nvidia 1650 to the 1650 ti so there are multiple variants of this laptop we'll put the prices up here on the screen and other than that well did i miss anything oh yeah the rams and the storage right so there's going to be 16 gigs of ram 512 gig of ssd storage and there's going to be a 55 watt hour battery now guys this is a gaming laptop so we don't really expect great battery life from it uh the Company says we should get somewhere around 5.5 hours of battery when browsing the web or doing casual work. But hey, if you're looking to get a gaming laptop, you're not getting it for battery life. If you are looking for something for battery life though, well, we just released a video on the Mi Notebook 14 as well as the Honor Book on our main channel, C4E Tech. Here's a card to that. You can check that out. So the next news comes from Fortnite. So Epic Games is apparently suing Google and Apple for removing their game Fortnite from the Play Store. So why are they doing this? I mean, come on. Uh, I guess a new update has added an in-app feature that now allows uh, users to directly buy stuff in the Fortnite app and not use any of Apple Pay or Google's payment services. But I mean, come on, Fortnite is a big enough. For a long time, we didn't even have Fortnite in the Play Store. So finally, now that we have it, uh, Google has again taken it down and same for Apple. Are these giant companies being a little too greedy? Are they being a little too, you know, monopolistic? What do you think? So apparently Epic Games is filing an antitrust lawsuit against Google and Apple for their in-app purchase rules. 
So kind of similar to what happened with Spotify and Apple. Moving on from one lawsuit to another, we have one Illinois woman, Kelly Wallen, issuing a lawsuit against Instagram. So what she is claiming is that Instagram has been using a mere 100 million users face data to tag them and collect information on them. Okay, so why is this not normal? I mean, you're uploading your photos to Instagram, so I guess they can do that, right? So what Kelly Wallen is saying here is that under the Biometric Information Protection Act, Instagram or any other online service cannot use your biometric information, such as your facial data or your voice or anything else uh, to tag you and uh, basically use them to identify you. So all of this data, even if they're collected, should have been anonymous. Facebook, of course, has denied all allegations since if they are indeed found guilty, then for every violation of the BIPA Act, they are liable to pay up to 1,000 US dollars or even 5,000 US dollars if the acts are found to be intentional or reckless. In fact, Google has faced some similar issues way back in April of this year where they found that uh, Google had been collecting information and building tags of face data and voice imprints of school kids. So guys, it seems like anonymity and any aspect of privacy on social media seems to have become extinct. What do you say, Anandhan? Yeah, privacy is pretty much non-existent at this point. You can Google search your name and your images will start popping up. So I have a question for you. Do you mind Instagram using your face for a better user experience? I probably don't because, hey, my face is in so many YouTube videos, people can search it up easily. So I guess as an influencer, it's a different aspect. But as someone who's private, who doesn't really, you know, have an Instagram account, but maybe is tagged in someone else's photos. Mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. So the next news covers a serious security exploit on Qualcomm success. So the researchers at Checkpoint Security have found out a bug that lets hackers record calls, steal data, install malicious software that cannot be uninstalled and even break the device. So what do you think about it? Well, that seems like a pretty dangerous bug. But hey guys, there is a good news for you. Qualcomm is already working on a fix. They're working on the low level code and are fixing up the drivers. And these drivers will soon be sent to the vendors. So by vendors here, we mean the OAM. So people like Samsung, Oppo, Realme, all the smartphone manufacturers. And from there, they will be soon sending out an update to your devices. So in the meantime, of course, this will take some time. As you can uh, guys realize, this is kind of a long process. But the good news here is that it seems like no one has been yet able to exploit this bug so while this is uh, this does sound pretty dangerous uh, there, it's very low risk at this moment and security and it's not really a security fault that you should be worried about moving on to the next news we have some good news for the intel fans out there seems like tiger lake is finally ready for prime time with tiger lake uh, intel is promising greater cpu speeds especially higher boost clocks as well as a greater integrated gpu speed so you know if you are running something like an ultrabook or something that doesn't have an integrated gpu and runs on intel hardware uh, then these new cpus should be giving you better graphical performance in casual games as well as productivity workloads what's more we are also going to get usb 4 and thunderbolt as standard so uh, this means that if you want to put something like an external gpu to your laptop you can actually do that now like uh, even before that we could be able to do that but hey it was restricted only a few uh, laptops something like the uh, razer books had that but other than that it wasn't that common to see Thunderbolt in uh, most laptops. So this is great news for all the laptop buyers out there. As for our next news, we have some more Apple leaks. Of course, it's about the new generation of Apple devices and we ha these leaks covered the iPhone, the iPad, and even the new generation of Apple Watch. And what's more guys, these leaks are coming from John Cruiser, who is uh, who has actually been uh, previously proved to be quite reliable since he's someone who actually was the first to leak the iPhone SE 2020. So Anantan, what are these new leaks all about? So the new generation Apple Watch and the iPad will release on September 7th via press release. As of the iPhone 12, it will launch via the event on October 12th and you can pre-order it on October 12th and it will start shipping at October 19th. As of iPhone 12 Pro, we don't have the exact dates of shipping. We are 
we are expecting it to be somewhere March. in november right yeah now but yeah of course these are all a league dates guys we don't really know for sure if they're happening or not but hey uh these come from a reliable source so let's see what happens about the iPhones by the way guys are you excited for these years uh new iPhones the iPhone 12s i am excited okay let's see what happens then moving on to the last news of our segment uh we have more news about the Nvidia RTX 3000 series cards it's more specifically the RTX 3090 and 3080 this is an actual look at the PCB now guys as you can see there's a very complex cluster of memory modules all around it seems like a huge amount of memory especially for something like a 3080 which the leaker claims this is a PCB of So I really don't know what's going on in here and then again the NVLink connector that also seems to have changed it's kind of surprising let's see where all of this leads but hey the leaker also gives us some good news that uh, Nvidia CEO would apparently be launching these cards on the 1st of September via an online event so I'm really excited for the RTX 30 launches 3000 series launches rather yeah. What about you? What do you think? More power, better for me. Okay, guys, uh, do you like ray tracing? Have you ever tried out any ray tracing in any of your games? Do let us know in the comments. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Uh, let us know how you like two of us hosting it. Uh, if you have any feedback for us, again, let us know via the comment section. As always, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. As for now, this is Miyamoto Anantan. saying goodbye for the day have a good one cheers